All right, welcome to the Ben Mala podcast, where you can get real facts and true advice about all things real estate, business, and lifestyle. Uh, ben Mala here. He has owned hundreds of million dollars in real estate. Um, send in your super chats too, because we're doing super chats tonight to get your answers, uh, to get your questions answered by the man right here. You're ready to go. And then we also are not doing uh, calls tonight, but we have two very important guests here. We have Ari here of Tampa Bay. He has brokered hundreds of millions of dollars in real estate. And we also have his right-hand man here, Nathan, ready to go fresh in the game. So we're all ready here to make some money. Um, also, don't forget, October 7th is the date. You guys got to be ready. We're doing a live show here in Tampa, Florida with the man himself, Ben Mala, to teach you guys all things real estate. You want to elaborate a little bit off of that? Dan? No, I don't want to elaborate. I just want you to buy a ticket, <laughs> come to the show. It's the slowest season in a year. I need rooms filled. Come down, go to binmail.com, book the event, book your ticket, book your room. You got two hotels to choose from, and we're going to be there to help you and tell you what you need to do to get on the right path of making some money. And, and what date's it going to be? October the seventh. Seven, and I heard there's going to be a nice buffet that night. Oh, we got food. It's going to be a meet, a greet, and eat. And even Vince is going to show up. Yeah. And tonight you're lucky. Not only do we have the big shot celebrity here, Jimmy Hart, and we have two brokers that I work with on a daily basis. This guy calls me. I'm not kidding. If he could, he, I don't take his call at eight. I don't wait. I wait till nine to pick up. This guy, you know why I work with him? Because every morning he's ready to rock and roll, baby. He's moving deals, okay? He's cooking and he's moving. And that's what I like. Why? I gave him hundreds of millions of dollars worth of real estate to sell. We're always looking to buy. We bought, we sold, we do it all. Why? Because he's a damn good broker and he's ready to work. Ari from Ripco, baby. And he'll rip you a new one if he has to. And he's got his... uh. Great right-hand man here, Nathan. These guys are a super team in retail. There's nothing they can't do. I don't care if it's from a million bucks to a hundred million. They can do it. Thanks for coming tonight, Ari. We really appreciate you coming all the way from Tampa. I did buy him dinner. Absolutely. Appreciate the time. Did you go to Applebee's? Yesterday, you just went. Absolutely. You just did a, a podcast with Crexy, okay? Crexy's one of the biggest sites there is for looking for retail. They had him doing a special podcast. How was uh, Crexy doing? It was a good time. It was the first time I did it, and I told you about it, and you asked me why I didn't show up on yours. All you well, had to do is ask. Now he's here. There you go. And then if you have like any questions that have to do with like broker or anything like that, we literally have the source right in front of you. So send them the super chat, and we'll definitely get to those questions because there's no better people to learn from than these guys right here, especially in the broker. And don't forget, get your tickets to Ben's show. It's going to be unbelievable. The whole family's going to be there. It's going to be not gonna great. Be there. I know I can't be there, man. And I'm Too not... busy. Big shot celebrity. Well, I'm on the Put. road. I'm on the road. He always, yeah, every time he, he calls me, he goes, when are you going to be out of town? That's when he kill. books your shows when I'm out of town. But look who's here. Vinny's here. Here. Come He's on, here. baby. I got your seat there for you, you baby. He's babysitting. He's babysitting. Seat. No, come on. Look at you. You got a full podcast. Oh, well, yeah. We got a full day here. Here you go, I'm baby. Just we extra, got it right like, here. Oh, in case they don't show up, then uh, you come on over. No, you're here. I'm just warming your seat up. Oh, here, I got go ahead. Baby duties. Stay down for a little He's bit. He's got to be watch the baby, baby daddy today. Baby daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but he's here. If you got a question for Vincent, send it in. Yep. All right. But we're here with real deal brokers that I deal with. All right. Okay. These guys are on my level, but they can help anybody on any level. So if you got a question or if you're thinking about buying or selling some retail and you cover the whole country, don't you? Yeah. On the single tenant net lease side, the whole country, shopping centers, most of the state. Anything that's doing retail, you can deal with. Yeah. For the All most right? part. And if not, Point you in the right direction. There you that go. Can. Look up Ari. What's your last name? Ravi. Ravi. There you go. Ravi. Okay. And he makes a mean butter chicken. <laughs> okay. So look up Damn Ari right. Ravi at Ripco. And if you need a question, I'm sure if you send him an email, he's online. Look him up. Ask him. And uh, I'm sure he'd be willing to help you, especially if there's a commission involved. And Nathan's right there, you know, doing all his support work and, and doing a lot of stuff with him. So you got a really strong team here. These guys know their numbers. They know what the, the market is. They know the deal, okay? And that's what you need. You need people who are experts. I'm not an expert. They're the experts. They do this stuff every day, you know? So that's why you got to deal with expert brokers like them. I already see a couple questions. Like once, is CCIM worth it? What do you see? 
I saw someone asking if a CCIM is worth it. You know, that mm. it's like a commercial real estate designation hmm. classes you take. I'd say, yeah, it is. Unless you can find like a good firm for training and a good mentorship for development. And th that's probably best. But is it a CCIM? Well, it's, it? it, well, this is yeah. a, but it's yeah, basically a designation code that represents right your credentials in real estate. And, uh, yeah. You right? learn about investment in real estate and take classes for it. I mean, yeah. it's always good to learn. You can Absolutely. Always, I learn every day. Okay. And like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but getting your real estate license, isn't that like the first step to get in the real estate world, especially being young? Yeah. I mean, you need the license to at least be able to sell, buy and sell or help people buy and sell real estate or lease it. In commercial real estate, the state license, you need it to do it, but it's about 99% residential focused. But, but yeah, that's the first thing you got to do. Let I mean. me ask you a question now. If you, Nathan, you, 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 you're young, you just got your, your license how many years ago? Uh, about two years ago. All right. So two years ago, you graduated college yep. and then you got your license. Yep. Yep. So I graduated from Florida state with a major in real estate. One of the few schools that actually has that major. So really fortunate to be able to do that. Graduated, moved down here about two and a half years ago, uh, to work with Ari in Tampa and immediately got my real estate license. Uh, it's a 70 hour course around there, but it, it takes no time at all. And as soon as you get that, you're able to start making some commission and, and doing deals. But the regular license that you get from the state to get a real estate license, you can do residential or commercial, correct? Absolutely, yeah. So you don't need a special license to learn commercial. It's, it's the same license, whether it's residential or commercial. You just got to make sure you're working with somebody who knows commercial that has a broker's license, right? Yeah, that's a key. Not just that they have a broker's license, but they know what they're doing and they're willing to teach you. All right. So you have a, a, a license, you're a broker here because you have a college degree that helps. So uh, if you do have a college degree in real estate, you're able to get your sales associate license. After two years of your sales associate license, then you're able to qualify for your brokerage license. That's the same way for a high school diploma too, isn't it? It is. Yep. Yeah, but uh, you can skip the courses with a real estate degree. So you're able to kind of bypass that 70 hour course, sit for the exam. Uh, but we call ourselves brokers. All of our licenses are under a main broker. Even if you have your brokerage license, it becomes a broker associate and it's knocked down to the same that we have, which is a sales associate, which is just take that course and you're able to start going right away. But you have a broker's license now? No, I do not. We just refer brokers, the right. lingo for it, but brokerage license. You plan on what, getting your broker's license now that you have two years in? Uh, down the road. Yeah, I do. Because that way you, you have a lot of opportunities to be able to set something up yourself. Then you get a bigger piece of that commission too, don't you, as a broker? Yep, you do. Ooh, you don't like that. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So, so listen, seriously, these guys know everything there is to know about retail real estate. Okay. How to buy it, how to sell it. They even have, you have, you help people with debt too, don't you? Yeah. We have a debt team based in Miami. They've done over 20 billion of volume over the years. Steve Sprandio and his team based in Miami. One stop shop. They can help you buy it. They can help you finance it. They can help you sell it. Lease That's it. the kind of people you got to deal with. And lease it. And lease it too. In fact, somebody in his firm just came up with a tenant for us. We're going to try to close the deal. So, right above the outback that we got. Yep. And she got a lead. Karina Gattasso got a lead for holiday as well. So, very good. Very on. good. And we got errands for you at Midway. A couple there years you go. Ago. They leased errands out for us. Not this, Aaron, the, the furniture uh, store. That's right. But, you know, so Ari's been a major uh, asset to us in helping us with our assets. He's like the ass in the set. <laughs> Appreciate that. I'll take that I as, meant a as a compliment. Yeah, I'll take it as and one. And Vincent's here. Speaking of ass. <laughs> Vincent may drag me all the way out to Apollo last night in a rainstorm to look at some shopping center on Apollo Boulevard, wasn't it? Apollo Boulevard, yeah. Like Apollo. That. I always liked Apollo. I always knew, you know, just because the placement of, you know, Apollo Beach, yeah. Apollo absolutely. Beach, where it's Great at. Area. But it was ugly getting out there. That was You got to go through a lot of country to get there. A lot of there. industrial. But, you know, there might be there, some though. opportunity there. We're looking into it. We'll keep you, we'll let you know. We saw that Win Dixie up. Center, Mirror Bay Village out there. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot there of growth out there. Yeah, I mean, there, there was is. like three to 4,000 single family homes and another two to 3,000. Uh, you know, multifamily condos, whatever they had. Wherever going. you look, it's the all point is this: the reason why we went out there is because he took me to an area that's on its way. It's been boomed, and now it's booming more. He showed me all the new shit that's being built. That's when you get in on the ground floor. Wherever you see the big boys doing stuff, you got to get up right there, coattail. He showed me uh, 
uh, I couldn't count how many brand new homes with clubhouses, apartment buildings, townhouses, condos, new department stores going up. You got to go where the growth is and you'll grow with it. You may not be able to do no big giant deal. We don't, but you might be going there and find something that fits your, you know, level of real estate. Go where there's growth. I wish I had a camera with us from Ybor City to Apollo Beach because I was sitting there sweating because I haven't been out there in a while. That whole drive, he was like, where does it start? Where does it all you see is greenery everywhere? He's like, what the hell is well, going on? Where there, the fuck are you taking me? But when I'm we like, got fuck. there, I was impressed. Okay. Fuck. Things were booming there. People are buying homes there. They're building and doing everything there. So, All that green's gonna change. I hope. I mean, it seems like it. The green will turn into green, baby. Yeah. So what do we got, Aaron? Anything? All right. Sh yeah. Shout out to a uh, house fan man. Thank you for the sur first super chat of the night. Uh, did you convert that small shopping plaza with needle point store into triple net? Is it difficult to convince small business to switch to triple net? Do you have any advice on that? Yes. Okay. It, it is difficult sometimes, but it is what it is. You can't change any of the terms until the lease is up, okay? So we have to wait for the leases to be up, and then we can renegotiate. And if they already have options with terms built in, correct me if I'm wrong, there's nothing you can do. I mean, you know, but we are planning to convert them to triple net because that's the way you run retail. It's always best to let the tenants be part of it and pay their share of the expenses. You could try to build it into the gross lease, but you're better off just whatever the costs are to run in the place, push it off on a tenant, have cam, let them pay the expenses, and then you end up a pure rent. But we are trying, but it takes time. We got to wait for the leases to burn out. I was going to say, it could take 10 years. It could uh, take five years. Whatever the lease is. they get to exercise the options too. So you yeah. never know. If but if the like options don't have specific terms... Yes. You can renegotiate. Yeah, well, there's some options that are market rate. So that's negotiable. But a lot of options are certain percentages. And that has to do with the rent. Percentages increase. Market rate has to do with, okay, the lease says, fine. Your lease is up. You got an option for five more years at market rate. Market but rate, yep. can you also change the CAM terms? Well, it's triple net. If it's triple net, it's whatever the CAM is. If it's a gross lease. If it's gross, typically not. But there's well, a... But they actually, you can't you, because the, a lot of times I notice the lease doesn't specify anything but what the rent's going to be. Yeah, and then it and then it summarizes what the cam expenses are. So if your cam is five bucks a foot one year and then goes up to seven bucks a foot the next year, then yes, you can pass. But if it's a this. gross lease, I mean, you can always increase your cam based on the expenses. Yep. That's why you need to do a cam reconciliation. We do cam reconciliations on all tenants that are on triple nets, and then they either pay us or sometimes we've actually given money back. Yep. You know, because they've overpaid on a cam. Uh, but if it's a gross lease, it's you got to wait till you have an opportunity to change the terms of the lease. And so read your lease. Everything's spelled out in a lease. The lease is the Bible when you're renting to a tenant. Absolutely. So over if, over if there's options, you can't change the gross lease to a triple net. No. Any, okay. I need to know because I see a lot of we're looking for it. Generally speaking, and I see no. a couple gross leases on some triple net properties still. There's quite a few but out there. A lot of times you can make it part of the negotiating. If you have the opportunity to negotiate the rent with them, you also got the option to go to negotiate terms. Yeah. Because you could say, okay, well, we're not going to jack your rent up so much, but you got to start paying cam. I mean, you can do anything. It's all negotiating. Everything in life is about two people coming together and finding a common ground where they're all happy. That's the way humans are, you know, and that goes for everything outside of real estate. You know, when two people are on different, you know, whatever they're doing business, it's all about just coming together and making a deal that works for everybody. That's what the life's all about. Now we just got to teach the Democrats and the Republicans that. Oh, geez. We don't get political on the show. Good. But, you know, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> if you got questions advice. for some real big shop brokers, now's your chance. And the, I know you guys are going to come to the show or what? Yeah. Yes. I'm giving. Absolutely. I'm buying you dinner that night. Done. Okay. October 7th. You're going to be in the same room, able to talk to these guys that move hundreds or if not billion dollars worth of real estate in your career. I'm sure you've, you've, you've contracted and done deals exceeding a billion. Yeah, I mean, I was running Marks and Millichap for four years, so personally transacted. And I met you through CB Richard Ellis. Yep, absolutely. So this guy's been with the biggest firms in the country, moving big deals for how long now? 15 years. 15 years. There you go. Started you don't get off. any better than that. And if you come to our show, you're going to have access to somebody like that. 
So what are you waiting for? Go to binmal.com slash live and book that ticket. I'm telling you, he's only put so many seats in there because the fire department only allows so many. So seating is limited. You better hurry up and get that seat because you might miss out. And then you'll be stuck out in the parking lot with Vincent. Oh, oh, it's look, chat. Hey, chat, look, we got a hater in the chat. A hater, hater in the chat. In the chat. Ben haters. is total fake news. What do you got to say about news? that? How much it says Ben is total fake news. I'm fake. There ain't nothing fake about me, baby. What do you got to say about that? It. So I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. He still has his hey, chat, knees. get he on Mark. His kidney. He Mark's a hater. Everything. Get him out of here. Anyway, <laughs> you know, when somebody says something that's totally ridiculous, I don't care. Don't bother me, especially if it's not true. So, you know, that's, I don't care. Who cares? But I'm not fake. I'm in my house right now. Uh, I, I definitely uh, gave him hundreds of millions of dollars worth of real estate to sell. I can so, vouch for you know, that. What are you going to do? Some people out there just well, want to hate. kind of fake sometimes. Hate, hate, hate. Whenever he says anything negative about me, it's fake. It's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Besides that, he keeps it real. Keeping it real, baby. Keeping it real. All what right. do you got, Eric? All right. Shout out Boomer Tuber. Thank you for the super chat. Can you really negotiate interest rates on CRE? Thanks. Can you negotiate interest rates? I mean, that's. I mean, generally speaking, Ben, you may have a different situation with your lenders, but generally speaking, there's not too much negotiating room. Look, unless you use our like, there's a there's debt teams, very good debt teams out there, and I'll speak for the one at Ripco. They have so many different relationships with different lenders that they do have some level of influence to get the lenders to work against each other, essentially, to come up with the best price and terms. But no, it's typically not the easiest thing to negotiate Listen, interest rates. You can try, okay? Borrowing money is, like I said, you got you and you got the bank. You got to find a meeting point that you both can swallow. Do I negotiate with banks? Hell yeah, I negotiate with everybody. I even negotiate with him. Yeah. When he can't give me the price I want, well, you know, Ari, we got a nice fat commission in there. And, you know, he's willing to help me and work with me to some point that it makes sense for everybody. Everything's negotiable. But typically, it depends on the size you are. depends how big you are. It depends on what risk you're in. Interest only is negotiable. Everything's negotiable in life. But typically, it depends who you are and what you got and how much risk you are. If I go to a bank and I want to buy 10 million bucks, I'm no friggin' risk. They know that. So they're going to negotiate with me as best they can. All right. It's all about your weight. And believe me, look at me. I got plenty of weight. <laughs> yeah. Now, and, and, you know. and tell me if I'm wrong, guys, but also part of like the quote unquote negotiation, that'd be just shopping around different banks. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because that Shop. is really part of the negotiation for yourself to take it upon yourself to get the best rate possible to benefit yourself. So you should take the opportunity to go shop around all these different banks and see who's really going to give you the best terms for your deal. So that is really part it's, of the negotiation. You're shopping, right? you got to shop for money, buy it, borrow money is shopping, you know? No. And if you don't have the time, that's when a good debt broker that has all those relationships that get those, gets those banks to compete against each when other. When I started out, I had a broker handle everything. Yep. He did it all for me because he shopped around. He had access to all these different banks. He found out which bank had a taste for what I had. He got the best deal for me. He put it on the table. He said, listen, I spoke to everybody and this is the best deal I got for you. I took it. You know, that's where you hire professionals and everything you do in life, try to hire professionals. All right. Yeah. That's it. Um, shout out AB. Thank you for the super chat. Good question for us right now. Uh, is it too late to negotiate to negotiate a commercial broker's commission after you've signed an agreement? Six percent. Uh, what are must-haves on a lease? Also, well, the first part, Ari, you can yeah, talk about. Part question. I mean, you know, I'll let him explain it because he's an expert and he's been in that situation many times. And be, you know, we just tell it like it is here. Ari. So look, the truth is everything's negotiable. But if somebody signs a document at a certain commission rate then that's a, a form of commitment, but it's not binding. So you would hope when people sign that commission binding agreement- Binding if you close that deal. Absolutely. Until that deal is closed and that closing statement signed, then yes, technically everything is negotiable, but typically speaking, Ben falls into this category. Our fees are usually not renegotiated. I mean, you know, you sign a document for a broker to market your property and to go out there and spend all this time talking to buyers and, and trying to sell your property- then you agreed to pay him a commission. Then you got to pay. It's a legal document. Now, if the broker, the brokers are the smart guys. Trust me. Okay. If they know they're not coming through because of the market, not their fault. The market's the market. You can't control the market. If I want $5 million, but he's saying, listen, Ben, the market's only going to pay you $4 million. 
Well, for me to take a million dollar hit, Ari would probably say, well, maybe I can work with you. Maybe I can work with the other broker. He's going to do everything he's got to do to close that deal. All right. Because he's in that deal. He, you know, it's much better. He gets something than nothing. So he's a smart guy. He likes to make deals happen. Okay. That's when you know you got a good broker. Now, if you got a broker that says, well, it's not my problem, then that's the wrong broker. All right. But everything's negotiable. But if you sign that document and you go to closing on whatever price you agree to, then yes, you got to pay the commission. Facts. I like yeah. it. That's how they make a living. These guys work in big fancy offices. How many people are on the team? <laughs> Five. Five people, five mouths to feed. And those five mouths to feed probably all got mouths to feed. Everybody's got to make money. Yeah, Everybody's everybody. got to live. You know, he made name, his name might be Nathan, but he can't live off of hot dogs. No, nope, not for long at least. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, shout out John Canaford. Thank you for the super chat. We are a small AV company. How can we get into more of these independent hotels to provide like audio, video, lighting services, brochures, and pricing maybe? Um, if we don't include pricing, does that turn off to like hotel brokers? Listen, you know, if you're or an bookers, AV company, sorry. okay, and I spend a lot of money on AV, don't we? Yeah. Okay, because the franchises want upgrades. The first thing you want to do is you need to maybe go directly to the franchises like Marriott, uh, Wyndham, all those big brands, Choice, Hilton, and find out what's the latest requirements. That they, they make us upgrade all the time. When we got to do a PIP, we got to upgrade the property. And they tell us exactly what we need to do. But in the meantime, get your company brochure and go right to the hotel and leave a brochure for the general manager and say, listen, I'm here and I can handle all your AV needs because it's very important right now. Everything is AV. Zooming, people staying in hotels need to do Zoom. They want to have meetings. There's all kinds of stuff. Go directly to the hotels and get them a brochure, get it in front of the GM, and hopefully they'll call you and tell them, listen, just give me an opportunity to bid whatever you need. Believe it or not, do you know I got a letter? from the Department of Defense, from the, I own a hotel next to an Air Force base in Tampa, McDill, right? Yeah, yeah. They sent me a letter and they did this to every single, go. this is good for the AV guy. They went to every hotel within a radius of any military installation. And if you had certain Chinese equipment and cameras and all this stuff, rip it out, baby, rip it out. And I'm not going to argue with the Department of Defense. They're most of our customers anyway. And they told us, get rid of it. We don't want it. And we had to rip all out all that equipment they didn't want and replace it with new equipment. That's part of the business. That's life. So go right to the, the, the horse's mouth and tell them who you are, what you can do, and do it. And it's all you, about marketing, selling you, your company. Uh, and if you can't get to the GM, so, I mean, definitely go to every – the more hotels you go to, the better the chances. If you and, go to a property management company that manages 100 hotels, well, that's even, that's everything good too, you got to do to promote to your get company. To. That's harder to get to. If you go to hotels, look for the F&B director because that's the person who sets up everything. The GM is – you'll probably never meet a GM because they're usually somewhere – doing something off the property or something, but F &B director, into. but that's, a, there's a lot of money in the AV company, especially us at the Sheridan. We spent thousands of dollars. We would try to buy stuff, you know, when we came across good deals to just save money on that. Cause I mean, if we found someone that could beat someone's price by a hundred bucks, we would go with it. So go there, beat the prices out and show them that you got nice equipment. And do you're what guaranteed you got to do to, get to the sell job. yourself. What else you got, Aaron? And show up and help them with the equipment too. Don't just drop it off. You got to help them with the equipment. I mean, so, give that full service. All it's right. pretty big for AV companies. Yeah. The guy next door started the AV business. I think he's a billionaire. What do you got? All right. Shout out Michael Bull. Thank you for the super chat. I've been out of crime for 15 years now and turned everything around with my record and entire body tattooed. Do you think somebody like me could do real estate? course anybody could be in real estate okay i don't is there did they do a criminal check to get your license yeah not anyone can get their license but he's been out of crime for 15 years i don't know the exact rules but Statue. there are certain things that will prevent you from getting your license there's but there's nothing that it. will prevent you from buying real estate you can always buy real estate you know as long as you're buying it with legal money and it's not stolen, you know. Yeah, as long as it's not done while committing a you know, crime. Yeah, of well, I mean, listen, real estate's for everybody, if you're a felon, okay? Can you get a loan? If you've been out of crime for 15 yeah. years, you should have a clean slate. If you want to right. get into real estate by getting your license, check with the state, see what their rules are. 
But anybody can buy real estate as long as the money's legal that you're using that, you know, to buy it and anybody can get real estate. And listen, just because, you know, listen, you've been out of crime 15 years. I think everybody's going to look at that as, you, you know, you got a clean slate and a fresh start now. As far as tattoo goes, wear long sleeve shirt and pants. Or sell single tenant net lease assets. It's a lot of phone work. So it's not as much face to face. And when you go to the bank to try to borrow some money, Try to look presentable. I'm just telling you, it's the light. It's the world we live in. All right, let's just face it. You want to go into a bank looking all, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm telling you, if you want to borrow their money, go in there where they're going to welcome you. So, you know, you, everybody, if, listen, if you got a clean credit and you got an income and you qualify, you're just a number in life. All right. If, you, if your criminal history is that far in the past, Everyone is a number. Don't matter what color you are, how old you are, how ugly you are. It doesn't matter. You're a credit number, your credit score, and you're either some sort of risk or not. And that's so. that's true. But you might have better luck at a private lender than than the big banks because try. That. But the private try. lenders are really down to earth. They're I mean they're normal people. Because they're making day. money off of you, more money. But listen, get in any way you can't fit in. That's what you got to do. And the only way you're going to know is by trying. So if you want to get a real estate license. Go online, look up a state you're in for the license, and see if they have any mention about criminal background. But in 15 years, I think you pass the time. Okay, I mean uh, he hasn't committed a crime over 15 years, right? So he's clean now. And I mean, I mean, don't you open up an LLC anyway to run the business? So it's kind of not your like personal name on everything. It's really the business. Anyway, so. try. All right, that's all I can tell you is try. And if you try, you will succeed in life, no matter what your past is. As long as you pass, it's your past, and your past ain't your present. What else? All right, shout out uh, to Lemon. Thank you for the super chat. I have 150 grand in cash and a paid-off condo in Tampa. Looking to take the step in investing in residential with um, in Tampa. What advice would you give me if you were in my shoes? Residential, I'd say, is in your, your world. All right, right now we're in a very tricky time, all right? All right, things are in a standstill in a weird place. Interest rates are up, all right, and property values are up. It's not supposed to be that way. Right now, we're in a waiting pattern. I'm telling you, I'm seeing it every day. Prices are coming down, okay? They have to because the numbers don't make sense. And if they don't make sense, they don't make money. At the end of this year, right now is a good time to start looking and lowballing, baby. You find a deal you like. All right, the numbers don't work. Make the numbers work and make the offer based on the numbers working for you. You can always go up, but you can't go down. Lowball is shit out of something. You need a good agent. I would not be here today if it wasn't for brokers and agents. There's no way possible. You got to find an agent that's willing to work for you, right off his low ball shit. Find out what you qualify for. You want to buy a duplex, a triplex, a fourplex? You know, look, start there. Get an agent. Tell him to show me everything. It's one, uh, two, three, and four units around here and see what the rents are, see what the expenses are, see what kind of return you're going to get on your money. Honestly, that 150 grand, you know, could probably get you, you know, a uh, $750,000 deal. You know, possibly at least a half a million, you know, so, you know, find out what's out there. Get a good agent. All right. That's what you need. And there's still deals in Tampa. What neighborhood were we in the other day? There there's was deals a house everywhere. There's always deals. The more you look, the more you're going to find. But use an agent and let them do your work. The seller's going to pay their commission. So they're working for you for free. All right, find a good agent and tell them what you're looking for. They should spit out a list. You go out there, you drive some of these places, you look at what the rents are, you look at what the expenses are, and you make a logical, intelligent decision on what the property's worth. All right, that's what you need to do. All right, you can also go to a lender and get pre approved too. All right, if it's in Tampa, I recommend Valley Bank. They're very friendly and they like to loan money to people. Go to any bank you want, get pre approved. And then as far as your condo goes, I don't know. Unless you really need the money, I would not bar against it in today's interest rate environment. All right? Leave that alone. Unless, you know, you get, I don't know. Do you do HELOCs on condos? I'm not sure. I don't do them homes. I think so, yeah. You could always get a HELOC if you want a little extra money to run to if you had to because you don't pay for it until you use it. It's just sitting there waiting for you. But at today's rates, I'm not pushing borrowing money. All right? The numbers really got to work. What else? All right. Uh, shout out Ahmed. Thank you for the super chat. Going to start making six hundred grand a year with my new job. My goal is to build houses and multifamily and get sweat equity. 
What are your thoughts or should I just buy already uh, built multifamily? Whatever you can do, wherever the deal is at, it doesn't matter. Okay, if you can do the numbers and you can build a house and make money on it, then do it. And if you can buy a multifamily property and improve it, then do it. But if you're going to be making six hundred grand a year, I hope you got time for all this. Focus on that. Whatever makes sense. What I would say is, building something from the ground up is much more complicated and a lot more moving parts than buying something existing. But can be profitable. It can be very value add is in building. But I will say. You didn't get the bill. You made your wealth by buying existing. Now you're going into development only because, because of all the experience. You've well, got. but I honestly, I've never been a builder. Little Ben, he took it on. It was a learning experience. He yeah. made some mistakes, but he learned. But we made money. Because now you're taking, and typically you can make money in construction, providing your land cost and your building cost is, you know, you know what that is. Then you got to determine well, once it's built, what's it worth? Then you look at that number. Then you compare how much profit's there. But typically it doesn't matter. Anything you can make money on, you do. He looks at everything. He don't care. He looks at land. He looks at houses. He looks at apartments. He don't care. Car wash. He don't care. Going, we, yeah. baby, it's whatever care center. he feel. There's some fat in the bone, baby. He's looking for the fat. Yeah, but you, you also got to also keep in mind that you need cash to do these things. You need cash to buy real estate. You need cash to build real estate. So I don't know what kind of cash you have, but it would be, especially right now in these times, because you know we all know where the rates are right now. So I would definitely focus on getting some cash in the need? bank. You need to focus on protecting Stash that six hundred thousand dollar job you got oh, yeah, for about bro. three to four years. Then you really yeah. ready to get some real Build estate. That cash you need to go to benmel.com slash consult with Ben. Get me on the phone and let's talk about you on an individual basis. Six hundred thousand? Damn, what kind of That's job as is much that? As you make. Yeah, okay. I also just want to take a moment, like guys, please like the video and share it with your friend. I mean, this is where you're going to get the real facts about real estate, real advice that would definitely benefit you. So share it with a friend, like the video. And if you're not subscribed, why are you not subscribed? We need like, a million this subscribers is the best, and we ain't there yet. This is the best real estate channel you can get on YouTube. The realest facts and the realest person right here. And you got the team to back you up too. So please like the video, subscribe, notification bell, everything. And don't forget about the show. October 7th, right? October Here in Tampa, 7th. Florida. Even Aaron will be there. I'll be there. I mean, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. You're gonna take time out of your busy schedule flying around. Yeah. I actually, yeah. I visiting was, colleges. I and did. Stuff. I just came back from uh, Notre Dame. Actually, I spent a couple of days there, checked out the college because you know that, that's the next big step in my life right now is going into college. Jealous. And <laughs> <laughs> seriously. <yeah. laughs> all right, what else we got? We ain't got all night. Ari ain't got all night. He's gotta get back at home. He's got work to do. He's got buyers to find me. All right, uh, shout out Manly. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat. Do you see the CRE uh, apocalypse? Some are reporting is co it's coming. Uh, big houses like Blackstone won't be able to afford their loans reset to current rates. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, things are definitely challenging, but there's no CRE apocalypse, especially here in Florida. I think it's coming. Well, everyone's got an opinion. I don't disagree necessarily. Commercial that, real estate. But apocalypse means... The, the, the sky is falling. I want to hear him talk. Right, yeah, him talk. Right. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking no, to you. Dude, I'm talking yeah, to look. You when talk. you say CRE apocalypse, it's a little dramatic. An apocalypse is like the world's fault coming to an end. Are things slowing down? Sure. Market cycle. But CR, commercial real estate is a tangible asset. It's needed and provides services, housing and multifamily, services and retail, mm -hmm. services and industrial, services for self-storage, hotels. People are still going to need to eat. People are going to still need a place to live shop store stuff people store more but junk how okay. long are we gonna sit back and look at cap rates below the interest rate yeah. that makes no sense come on let's be honest all right that, this show is honesty baby that tell is not, like it is i see apocalypse all right so i'm being apocalypse is true. Right. So, Aaron, wait, wait, you, you so need to our, change that question so take is that the uh, an apocalypse is not coming no, absolutely not. So it also, is. But is there challenging times and headwinds? Yeah. When the interest rates go up in 18 months, which should have been done over four years, then yeah, that's going to cause a drop in velocity. We've seen about 60 to 70 plus percent drop in velocity year over year, but that's far from the far, far okay. from. All right. So, I, so, so that's one take. But so what's your take? But there are fail because, all right, I sucked away enough money to where I can live without cash flow. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm strong enough to live without cash flow. But all the guys that have partnerships and need a capital call, commercial real estate is not like residential. You don't get 30 year loans. You get three, you get five, you get seven, you get 10 year loans. Yep. And sooner or later, when those loans are up, you're going to be paying today's interest rate and your cash flow is out the fucking window. Pardon my language. I said I wasn't going to curse today. Yeah, it was already hey. here. Well, so listen, it's 37 it's gonna, minutes. there's going to be deals. That's what bad is. We don't need an apocalypse. All you need is one good deal to make it, baby. That's what you need. And the deals are coming because sooner or later, the interest rates at this rate right now are going to start hurting people. And a lot of people aren't going to be able to withstand the pain. That's a fact. Sure. I'm right. crying so- every night. I look, I agree. There's, there will be pain. I pay to own some properties right now because I was stupid. I didn't fix my damn rate. And I can't control the market. I can't control the, the, the interest rate. And that's life. Now, luckily, I can live without that extra property cash flowing and that property cash flow because I got other properties that are cash flowing. So I'm keeping my head above water. And I'm, you know, and I also got, you know, backup money to protect me. A lot of people can't do that. There's a lot of non-recourse out there. I predict you're going to see a big CMBS crash in, in a lot of loans. Wait, Sam, what does that stand? What does that stand for? Because I don't know what that stands for. Commercial mortgage-backed securities. Most of the buyers that we deal with don't do CMBS loans, but those are the type of loans that are very strict rules and covenants. So if those are violated, then that's probably debt okay. to ratio, right? right. Yep. The bank says when they loan you the money that if you can't maintain a certain cash flow, yep. you're in default. And if, they could call that loan and they're gonna, you know why? Because they're gonna get scared. They say, oh shit, if he ain't got money coming in, he can't maintain the property. He can't handle it. Those are far less flexible than the conventional loans that lenders, banks, life insurance. The companies. banks are gonna have to start telling us about the bad loans. They don't want to right now. You saw what happened in California. You know why that all happened in California? Those banks went belly up. You know why? Yeah. Because of what? Real estate. Yep. Well, tech as well. Bad investments. They loaned money to people, and the the, the, the values were, in, were very high back then, yep. and now the values aren't so high, and the cash flow ain't what it used to be, and people got scared, and they took their money out of the bank, and the bank went belly up. And you know what? I lost my shirt in that bank that went belly up in Silicon Valley. Because I own preferred stock in that bank I bought three years ago when it was a strong bank. Uh, And I lost everything. Every penny of that stock went down to zero. Oh, by the way. I couldn't save that one. I could not save that one, boys. Let me tell that to Aaron. Is that a pass along message? (laughs) (laughs) It really messed up your Aaron. Aaron. (laughs) Fucked you up on that one. Yeah, I mean, I I wonder how the market's going to look, you know, when I start getting really deep into the business, you know, like, because that's only when you think about it, what am I? I'm 16. So I'm going to start getting into it when i'm out of college so what four or five six years look the fact of the matter is this too shall pass i mean market cycle it's a cycle nothing's permanent it's a cycle and unfortunately we don't get political but we're being run by psychos so we got psychos in the cycle (laughs) and i'm sorry trump was a cuckoo too i'm not you know i'll tell like it is but i was living good baby that's all i can tell you i was living really good when interest rates were too you know i was paying a bank sofa Plus a point and a half. You know what SOFA was? It went as far down to a half, a point, or even a quarter at one time. SOFA is a type of loan. Free money, baby. SOFA SOFA is a type of loan you can get, right? SOFA is a a rate that you borrow against. It has to do with the overnight rate. A lot of people don't know what that is out there. The funds rate, I think, is at five and a half right now. Am I right? I think so, yeah. The federal government's loaning banks money at five and a half. The bank's still got to pay to operate the bank. They got to make a profit. They got employees. They got buildings. They got all the computer shit to run. It costs money to run a bank. They got to tack on at least two points. All right. Normally they want to tack on three or four. And is that is that for any real estate or just like commercial or in, it general, doesn't matter in general? You got the Fed funds Typical rate commercial. and then okay. the banks need to loan on the deposits. Banks are paying me five and a half percent on my money right now. Just sitting there. I can touch it anytime I want. It's a hundred percent safe. And they're paying if they're paying me five and a half, they gotta loan it out at seven or eight to make any money. Yeah, we're still selling stuff for you at a 5.8 or 7.1 cap. But this is, well, me and you are on a different level. We're dealing with 1031 buyers. He taught me something the other day. I never knew the thing about a 10 what? 33. 1033. I never even heard of it. What's that about? So 1031 is if someone sells a piece of income-producing real estate, 
they have a chance to defer capital gains by reinvesting that money into a like kind investment real estate, which, which is what we've done our, whole, our entire tell lives. Us what you taught me. So a 1033 is if somebody sells their real estate or to the government or to the municipality via eminent domain. So the in this case, the DOT needed it for additional road work and interchanges in a certain area in the Tampa area. And they buy that property from you through eminent domain. You have two years to reinvest that money into Call other- the government up and see if they want to buy any of my assets, please. <laughs> All right. Can you do that? Hey, the hotel next door to mine in Tampa, we were just talking about earlier. The DOT, Department of Transportation, bought that hotel. Yep. They're knocking down 400 rooms. They gave that guy about 40 million bucks. He had two years to replace the 40 million bucks? For that hotel? Yeah, if it's eminent oh domain, God. you got 1030. Yeah. I want you to sell all my stuff to the eminent domains. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah. that would be a you dream come both. true. You and me both. All right, what else you got, Aaron? Come on. We got all night. I already got to get home. You got a, a half hour drive. Uh, shout out Eddie Rods. Thank you for your super chat. Ben, love the videos and information. I'm a licensed real estate broker in three states, Florida, North Carolina, and Illinois. Uh, do you have your set brokers to do business with, or are you open to new partnerships or new Listen, brokers? I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you the honest how I've made where I'm at today. We were talking about this over dinner. Loyalty. Okay. Loyalty. If a broker brings me a deal. You should go back to that broker. You want to be a good broker to me? Bring me a deal, and I'll do whatever I got to do to it. And when I'm ready to sell it, I'll give it back to you. Okay? That's how I operate. Okay? So there's always opportunity for a new broker in my life, but you got to bring me a deal. Or call Ari up if you got a buyer, and he's happy to work in a commission split with you. All right? There's always room for a broker to get in, but you got to bring something to the table. All right, you got to bring him a buyer or you got to bring me a deal and you're in. That's all it takes. What else? All right. Uh, agree, shout Nathan? out. Absolutely. What do you think about that? You sell somebody a piece of real estate. I mean, don't you think that's a fair way of doing business? You sold them a deal. They made money on a deal. Shouldn't they show loyalty and come back to you? Sure. Yeah. And that's something we like to base our, our mindset off of. We're always open to work with other brokers. And, and part of that is by incentivizing them the healthy co-broke. We always try to make sure that we're splitting half of our fee with a buy side broker because 90, 95% of what we do is list. So we well, always depends want to on bring, the price they bring. They got to bring you a good price. Absolutely. It's got to be something that makes sense. But we're always wanting to work with other people. If that makes sense for our client, we always put our client first. And so that's our priority. And they have. I've done it many, many times with him. Recently, we're in contract to sell properties right now. We're working on contracts. We're doing everything. He's showing properties. He's listing properties everywhere. We're cooking, baby. And uh, hopefully we've sold how many assets in the last few months? Three. That's it. You yep. sold I Drive. I Drive. You sold a, a you. public shopping center in Englewood. Two you sold two Win Dixies. That's yep. four right there. Well, we got two under contract. You got LOI. two under contract. This guy's cooking here, baby. He ain't just cooking uh, butter chicken, baby. He's cooking some deals. So what else we got, Aaron? All right. Uh, shout out, Mohammed. Thank you for the super chat, Ben. A lot of people uh, can, right now cannot afford to buy a house due to the interest rate. Demand is down. Why is the supply still low? Who's buying? These these properties We're in a crazy market right now. The sellers don't want to get it in their head. They can't get the same price they got earlier or could have got. All right, people only listen. If the interest rate used to be four, let's say four, safe place for a house, right? Sure. Now it's at eight, and that's like FHA or something. That means they only qualify for half the damn loan based on their income. Okay, and the sellers got to get through their head. I listed that damn house. For twelve million dollars, I sold it for eight seven fifty. That's the market. What am I going to do? Sit around with the house and be a oh, I got a twelve million dollar house to sell. It ain't twelve million dollar house if nobody wants to pay it. It's a market, but you're going to see things turn. They have to. More, but I I spoke to a president of a bank today, and he told me mortgage applications and mortgage loans are at an all time low right now. Okay, so people are just getting way back, or prices got to come down, or people got to buy cheaper stuff. The guy that used to qualify for a million dollar house, he only he only qualifies for half a million now based on his payment. That's life. It's the market. It's what you got to do. You just got to wait it out or buy something cheaper. 
I don't know what to say. Inventory is low because people are afraid for the next step. You know, they don't want to sell their property for a cheaper price. They're going to sit on it. You know, that's the way it works. It's life. Yeah, yeah. And just to add to that, Ari and I were talking to somebody this week, and around 50% of people are locked into an interest rate that's 4.5% or lower. So if they sell, they're going to go get something at a way higher interest rate. And then this is residential. So how, how, why would you sell right now? Residential, commercial. He's 100% right. If a guy sells today and it's sitting there with a fixed low rate and he sells, when he has to go out and replace it, he's going to pay double. All right. So it may not pay for him to sell right now that he's 100% right. What else? All right. Uh, shout out. I'm a cycle. Thank you for the super chat. Single tenant triple net leases don't seem to make any sense right now unless you're in a 1031 because mortgage rates are higher than the asking cap rates. Do you think that rates might drop under asking caps in the next couple of years? So single tenant uh, net lease is a different type of animal because you can buy, it's essentially a annuity and a cash flow with very little to no management. So a lot of that type of investment is investing into the credit of the tenant that's in the term of the lease. So if you have a 10, 15, 20 year, call it Walgreens, Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, that's essentially a mailbox check. So a lot of people buy those because they know it's usually all cash, very low leverage because you're right, especially when cap rates are lower than interest rates, the return won't make much, much sense. But there's other reasons people buy it. And it's for convenience. It's for having no management. So someone that sells a multifamily asset they've owned for decades, they spend hours and hours every single week dealing with tenants, fixing up units, and they just want to, in the sunset of their career and life, want to relax and get a check. Yes, it's a smaller check, but it's, you're also doing less work and for it. And divert a tax. And, but you are seeing cap rates go up. Yeah. Look, cap rates have to go up. They're going up uh, slower in Florida because we have a propped up, healthy state economy. And your question, do you think that rates might drop under asking caps in the next couple of years? Geez, that's a great question. If I knew the future, I We'd wouldn't all be, be here. Brilliant. We'd all be yeah. billionaires if we had a crystal ball. But that has to do with politics, and we don't talk about politics on this show. Okay? But, you know, cap rates have to go up now because it makes no sense. Okay? That's a fact. But you can lowball, baby. He's bringing me plenty of offers that are lowballing me. And, you know, I swallow what I can swallow. And they try to meet. You know, we try to find a meeting point. And sometimes we can, and sometimes we can't. You know, that's life. That's part of being in real estate. Business, not emotion. But you can always go up, but you can't go down. So lowball something. When a guy lowballs me, I'm not in, I don't get mad, do I? No. I just say, listen, he's a smart guy. He wants to buy it at his price. <laughs> I don't blame him. He gets a little mad. I get, you know, I get upset with For myself, about. but not with him. You know, but sometimes he brings me offers that are millions of dollars less than what I'm asking, right? Yeah, and we counter him because we know it's a game to play. And there's room. We just got to figure out if we can meet in the middle. Somewhere. That's it. I mean, you yeah, got to do what you got to do. I've been taught at a young age, especially from him, is that you can't be emotional with money, with your money. Yeah. You, it's strictly business. Business is business. That's why you'll hear that all the time is that business is business and don't get emotional. Take that money. Easier he, said than done. He calls me up and he gives me some low bowl offer. I say, oh, boy. So you know what I do? I have to go back. And I got to look at my basis to see because basis is very important because when I may have 1031 is in a deal, which I did, and my basis is very low. So that means <coughs> I'm going to have a lot of gain. What is my tax on that gain if I can't 1031, which is next to impossible these days? I have to figure out, does it pay to go out and buy something else? Do I need finance if I buy something else? If I got to pay the government something else? And sometimes I've come back and say, you know what? Do it. I have. Absolutely. We wouldn't close these deals. If you Every situation is different. But low ball if you're buying. And that's all you can do is figure out when your bar rock bottom is when you get involved with a broker to sell your property. Look at all the aspects of the deal. How much cash am I going to walk away from that deal? If I got to pay Uncle Sam, how much is that? It's all formulas. It's all common sense and numbers. There's no emotion. What else we got? All right, shout out OG. Thank you for the super chat. Hello, boss man Ben. Love your content. You're always recommended for viewers to get their real estate license. But how does someone get to your level of deals, non-residential wise? I started with residential. All right. Basically, you want to get you want to get somewhere in life. You got to start at the bottom. I didn't have any money. You start at the bottom and you find a deal that you can do. All right. I don't care if it's a friggin' trailer. I've seen guys go out. 
I'm serious. I've seen guys go out and get a trailer for free. You know why? Because the people died, they abandoned it, and 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 all the park wanted was a lot rent. So the guy had to own the lot. He said, "Listen, you take this trail. You agree to pay me three, four, five hundred dollars a month with a lot rent. I'm happy. You can have the tra- the, the the manufactured home." The guy goes in. He spends a few grand fixing it up. He rents it out for maybe seven or eight hundred dollars a month, or maybe he'll even sell it. Now that it's fixed up, because now people that tend to want to buy stuff. They want to buy something to move into. They don't want to buy something to fix up, okay? And the same thing with houses. Most people starting out use FHA. FHA has an inspection. You have to meet the FHA inspection to be able to get a loan on that house. You can buy a fixer-upper really cheap, fix it up if the numbers work, and make it to pass the FHA inspection. Then that opens you up to all these other buyers that you can sell to. So get in where you fit in. That's what it's all about. And just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. Like LL Cool J song, doing it, doing it, doing it. You know that song? Yeah, by the way, buying residential first. Residential is a little less complicated. You don't want to venture into buying commercial real estate, shopping centers, single tenant net lease, because a lease comes with it. The lease is the most important thing. And those properties are typically going to be a couple few million dollars at least, where, like Ben said, a trailer a condo, residential, <clears throat> leases don't mean nearly as much. They're a little bit easier because they're lower price points. You make a mistake, you're going to lose less term. money. They're not as long-term. <clears throat> and the leases are 30, 40, 50 pages long. And unless you know those things inside and out, there's a lot of little landmines in all of those documents that you just got to make sure you don't do when you're going to do it for the first time. We learn every day because we didn't read the leases. Yeah. You know, we, we learn. There's all kinds of things that these – Companies are smart. These are billion-dollar corporations we're leasing to. They got lawyers that come up with all these damn clauses and little things that you got to be careful of. Just like, you know, what we learned is that in a lot of times in a lease, I'm sure you've seen this a lot, there are things in a lease saying that if a certain tenant moves out, yep. not them, somebody else. Their rent, their rent gets cut in half. Or they because have, the, or they have the option tenant. to cancel the lease and leave. Because if you lose the anchor tenant, you might be losing a lot of traffic to that place, and that's going to screw up their business. It makes sense on their side, but you got to read the leases; they're very complicated. But anyway, getting back to growing, listen, get in wherever you can, find out what works for you on your income level, and do it, and then keep doing it. That's what I did. Twenty-four hours a day, nonstop. Uh oh, we got a deal coming. We got a deal coming. All right, yeah, yeah. So shout out Jim from Medellin, Colombia. Shout out to Medellin. I want to go there one day. Uh, Anyways, uh, I'm selling. I'm selling a shopping center on Gulf Boulevard in Been North Reddington Beach in January. I was there today. But I need to find an appraiser to give me an evaluation. Do you know where I can find one? Yes. Go to BenMal.com. Consult with Ben. Maybe I can save you the money on the appraisal. Maybe I'll buy it. Okay. If it's Reddington Beach and Gulf Boulevard, is it that brand new one I almost bought with the burrito place in it and a hair place? I mean, that's literally only 10 I mean, minutes listen, away from us. We, not own, even. we own stuff in Reddington Beach. So go to benmal.com slash consult with Ben. Get me on the phone and let's see if I can buy your deal or I'll at least refer you to a great broker like Ari or and an appraiser. But you don't really want to be you want to be careful with the appraiser. He can do an evaluation. Yeah. You don't need an appraiser. You got an expert right here that can almost tell you to the penny what that property's worth and what the market's willing to pay. He knows you don't need an appraiser. And banks don't recognize appraisers that you buy. Only time a bank's gonna recognize an appraisal for somebody else is from another mm-hmm. bank. They won't let you buy the appraisal and use it. So yeah, call Jim. Ari. If all you're looking for, first, because I might be able to do the deal. He's got my number, so and he'll I'll give save it to you. Commission, but you're using Ari. But based on your question, <laughs> well, you sell it, it doesn't seem like you need an appraiser. You need someone like myself or Nate to give you a valuation. You be, let me tell you something. After Go you to mymail.com slash consult. Get me on the phone. We'll talk about it. Yes. If it's too rich for my blood and you're looking for top dollar and you don't want to make a quick deal, even though you're in uh, Medellin, Colombia, oh, I'm, be careful with you. I mean, I want to do business with That's him. a good song. Uh, you do business with him. <laughs> anyway, get me on the phone. Ari can tell you exactly what it's worth, and we can make you a deal. All right? What else? All right. Shout out, OG. Thank you again for the super chat. I uh, love your content, Ben. You're an inspiration. You're a badass father. My question to you is, did Vincent keep the Rolls Royce? Ding, 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 ding. Did he? You'll have to watch the episodes and see. It gifted to him. All right, stop. If I gave him the car, I'd rather give him the car than give him the money. Damn, All right? I want a Rolls. And, and listen, he got a Rolls. You want the Rolls? 
You got a beautiful he just said, you want the money or you want the roles? Oh, oh, I didn't you know could, there was the He option. can sell a car tomorrow to his name. Whose name's it in? I, I will money. not sell that car because I love that car. There's a history behind the car. History that you behind should have some it, sentimental value over. You guys, for, you guys forget about all the editing Rafal does. Him and Rafal are out there editing stuff. He starts the shit with me, and I, you just catch the end of it with me fighting back against him. But nobody sees all the shit. He's poking me. How many He's just poking me all day. you moved to and lived in and managed? And- I can't even count on my fingers because I ain't got enough fingers. The editors know who's paying them, too. And let me tell you, he's living in a rough place where you wouldn't drive no rolls. But. <laughs> Orlando? Oh, my God. But anyway, listen. I'll take whatever but, I can get because like I've, learned, I've learned one like thing with dealing with you. He pulled up the other day. <laughs> we're coming he... to a building. We're auctioning off. That's on an auction. And I pull up in my rolls. And then he pulled up next to me. <laughs> and little Ben was pissed because he pulled up in a Maserati. <laughs> I said, move this shit out. Who parked this over in Rolls Royce Park? But it's a beautiful car. and you Beautiful love it. car. But I learned something that you can use you this with it. any rich person, your boss. Use it with all the rich people you deal with. When they offer you something, don't sit there and try to be the bigger man and go, oh, I don't need it right now. You better take that shit because tomorrow that offer might be something different. And I've it's learned so that with him. If I would have said, no, I really, really don't want to get the hell out, he would have took that car and did something it's with it. And then I would have been looking yeah. back like, damn, I just lost that. So if he down. offers me anything now, I'm taking it. You nothing and you didn't he take could it, offer me dinner. I'm taking it. It's a beautiful it. car. It's a two door coupe and it's really nice. Yeah. And we both right. know the previous owner. Okay. The previous owner was a guy that actually started being in real estate. He passed away. So we knew the guy that owned it. He barely used it. It's a beautiful car. So, you know, but I caught it. It was a very bad day that day. Okay. Because I was pissed. He knew he was wrong by having a puddle in the parking lot. The data buyers is in there for the hotel. And the place wasn't up to par like it should have been. And you have four people you told about that. Never mind. So and it still ain't get done. Them. But you, the buck stops at the top. You're at the top. All right. You see what happens when I and don't I still, do stuff myself. He's lucky I gave him the rose before I came to the hotel that day and saw the big puddle of water there. Because then it would have been a problem. He would have the inner rose. Anyway, he earns everything I give him. All right. And I don't give it to him. He earned it. And you so earn everything I give you. I'll be paying him. Hard time. All right. You know, if he wants something and he really does want something or whatever, I come across something that I think he would like, I get it for him, but I'm not giving him nothing. He earned it. You know, Aaron has just like earned the, nothing. Just like the Hellcat. Oh, sorry. I mean, Scat Pack. Sorry. Scat Pack. He earned that scat pack, though. You I still earned make that Aaron scat earn pack. stuff. Shoot. All right. What else we got? All right. Uh, shout out, Liv Easy. Thank you for your super chat. You know fixed it. Thank you. I need a little work here and there. I didn't myself. I didn't let him fix it at the dealer. He didn't want to fortune. Shout out. Shout out. to my guy who did it for like a lot less money. Shout out, Karina. Thank scared. you for the super chat. All right. Other than Nate, who is your favorite colleague and why? I mean, that's an easy one. It's obviously oh, Karina, shit. the one that asked the question. Oh, She's the one that's finding tenants uh, for you for all the clients. That's the lady I met last week. That is the lady you met last week. She a is dinner? a badass. No, no, I met, I met a She's lady. My team member, ex-military. Yep, no, but Karina is our leasing agent. Uh, she represents landlords like Ben and other other of our clients and her own that she generates. Uh, She's out there hustling, proactive. That's who I wanted to talk to because he's okay. trying to get me to lease. Where the hell are you leasing this stuff or what? You He's selling understand. more property She's out there knocking than we're on doors. leasing. She's making calls all the well, time. I She's so going because... to be honest. Blast. Let's be honest. All right, let's go. Let's, let's be honest. Real. I Talk like to be honest. Please yeah, be honest. Let's hear it. If, now we have our public shopping center in contract, right? Yes. No, if, they're closed. Uh, yeah, one holiday. In holiday. We have it in contract. We do. If the little empty space we have was rented right now, I would be getting more money. That's the game. That's real estate. Yeah, it's real estate. She can't control what tenants say yes or no. All she can do is create the market, go out there, work night and day on your behalf. But if I had do it better than anyone else in that little 1400 square foot space, Truth. like a pizza place, a sandwich yeah. shop or any hot dog stand, I'd be getting more money. Why? Because the rent and your income determines your value. Okay. Luckily, we rented half that space, a little bit, split it in half. We got Publix open up a liquor store, yep. and that increased the value. Now, if I didn't do that deal with Publix, I wouldn't be getting that value on that vacant space. So, true. you know, I mean, this also leads to another point. Like, we're in 2023 now, right? 
if you're a woman out there, you can also succeed in real estate. I, oh, I mean, I'm just saying. Like, I know. Estate. I'm just saying. I mean, sometimes, you know, but it's true. Like, like, it's a her. real thing out I'm there. I'm glad she's on your team. And I believe she came through and attended for us in a very difficult place to rent. And I'm praying tomorrow. Here's some good news about the deal going through. But it's very important. Leasing is the key to retail real estate. That's how you get your upside, your value add, fill in the space. Because honestly, if the space is vacant, it's not worth shit in our, in our world. And it's even worse because you got to pay the taxes, the insurance, the maintenance, all the cam on that space is on the owner. So empty space, you're going to race. I mean, he's, I'm not racing no more. So I'm going to start <laughs> working with, I'm going to start working with Karina <laughs> and we got to get this solved because we got vacancies. I'd love to work with anybody to help me solve vacancy issue. I just started with retail so I'm about to start digging in head first. Uh, you sold a bunch of properties, but what's up with this? He was with involved the, with John's the rentals. Pass. You were involved with John's Pass, weren't you? Yeah. So what? You yep, were working yep. with a guy and yep. you, were, you guys represented me. You were working with you, the guy represented me. You guys, I was there when you won the auction. Won the auction on my phone. I did it. Yeah. Congrats. That's a, that was, I pressed the button and we did it, baby. All right. What else you got, Aaron? All right. Uh, shout well, out. Tell them how important it is. What? Leasing is the key to... Yeah. Triple net. The only the key to multifamily is leasing is the key to everything. If you got empty space, you got to fill it, right, yeah, Nathan? But, yeah, but, but leasing in triple net is way really harder important. than leasing in and going yeah. out and grabbing old ladies to put in the apartment and schmooze them like I used to. I rented hundreds you of apartments. Young ladies, you only do the old ladies. Only the old ones. It's easier to rent. I ain't trying to work that hard. <laughs> what, did he, what did he offer them? Is the question to rent I the apartment? I gave them everything. Everything. Ooh, very I don't want to know. Approach. And what you do there. But triple net is hard to lease because you yeah, really shopping got shopping center, single tenant net lease. It's a lot more complicated. You deal Give me with some business secrets. Owners, Give me some secrets. Give them some secrets because you would be golden goose Look, if you could rent. Even if you found Papa John's, if you had a connection to Papa John's. And you start reaching out to people who were looking for Papa John's or had retail that was empty that you could put that in there, you would make millions of dollars. That's what I love about brokerage. The secret is very simple. And Work your ass off. Do everything you can to learn because it's all about the knowledge you have and the amount of time you put and into networking. it. Networking. And Which is, yeah, networking, cold calling, knocking what else on you doors. Got? All well, no, yeah. time out and tell Wait. them how much, how much your commission is. Fucking, I'm uh, I'm sorry, my language, but it's crazy. Commission on a. a Residential is three hundred bucks. <laughs> Commission for these guys if they rent something out goes for like a year long. You get a whole year's no, worth of the lease. No. You get, tell, explain the so, conditions on leasing. All right, so if it's a five, ten year lease from the low spectrum to the explain, high spectrum. Let me yeah. it. So you got to pay a percentage of the total value of the lease. So if, if it's, it's a three percent or a five percent commission, explain it. Yeah. So if it's let's a, say I gave you an empty space, it's five percent commission. Yeah. So if it's an empty space, five percent commission. We sign find a tenant that pays a ten year that Welcome signs a that signs a ten year lease, and it's a two hundred thousand dollar income of rent year. every year, times ten. Two million dollars times five percent. Times five. Two million dollars times five percent is a hundred thousand dollar commission. Yeah, so that's what we get upon signing. But you usually. got ten years on that tenant, so I'm happy to pay the hundred grand. Okay, you give me a ten year lease at two hundred grand a year. Uh, yeah, you can get a hundred grand. Sure, you're in your job. Uh, you earned your pay. What else you got, Aaron? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. focus on these super chats for just a, a minute. Uh, shout out, Amika. Thank you for the super chat. Thoughts on creative financing, like seller financing, is subject to it's peer to peer, no banks involved. Motivated sellers will entertain it. I mean, these days I'm starting to see a lot more creative financing because the interest rates are high and properties aren't moving. Listen, it's all about two people agreeing on something. If you got a seller, <clears throat> may not want all that cash. You know why? Because he, he might have to pay a lot of tax on it. So maybe a lot of sellers want to sit back and collect a monthly return on it instead of getting all that cash. Listen, it's about two people agreeing. If you get a, a seller to finance, that's fine. I talked to a bank today. I said, hey, by the way, if you loan this guy 75% and I carry 10% on a second, will you let him do the deal? All right? And they said yes. As long as they're, they're, what's the word, subordinate? Yeah. As long as they're in first position, they don't care. You know? So, yeah, you could do creative financing. What was the rest of that? It had to do with, um, you lost it. If it's peer-to-peer -peer versus banks is like lender to Everything's borrower. possible if it works for everybody. Okay? 
You can use banks as part of the deal. You can use banks not in the deal. It all depends on two people, a meeting of the minds. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Creative financing, definitely a way to go if it makes sense. Nice. Uh, shout out to Pool Share. Thank you for your chat. What do you pay monthly for your pool services? <laughs> Me? I think I'm only 100. Yeah, All right, listen, thousand. he's got 20 grand to burn. Where should I put it? Put it in a pool. Uh, listen, I don't know. I, I got lucky because I fired my pool company because they were charging me too much money. I got a lazy river, very expensive. But luckily, the guy that does my hotel comes over here and he does it for like 500 bucks a month. And uh, he does a great job. Anyway, uh, pool services are pool services. 20 grand to burn. Where should you put it? Put it on the game, baby. Go to my bookie. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> anyway, you got 20 dead to burn. I don't know. You could put 20000 down on a $100,000 deal. That's 20% down. Go find a decent deal for hundred grand. Or you, you can find something cheap enough. Believe it or not, I've had guys call me, and there are properties that you can buy that cheap if you got the guts to go in parts of Chicago or Indiana. They got some rough it. neighborhoods. I just came hey, back listen, to Chicago. That's where I got my start. I went to neighborhoods you wouldn't walk into. I'm sorry. But I had the balls to walk in there. I bought properties for 20 grand before. You could buy them in some of these really tough places. Or you could buy a mobile home maybe. I mean, you know, but 20 grand is typically 20% down on a $100,000 deal. That's probably your best start. Okay, go look for a hundred thousand dollar deal and see if you can buy it with twenty percent down. I agree with that, just not in Chicago. Yeah, I was gonna say wherever, I don't know, I don't anywhere. Know where you are, you got in, fifty in, states to choose hey, from. In Florida and every major city, all the condos are sitting at hundred k plus. So <clears throat> people are saying go to Gary, Indiana. All right. Anyway, I know about. All right. Um, shout out, sent. Thank you for the super chat. Set to bring the Jack in the Box to Florida. We'll open six locations in the Central Florida area. Ben, do you have any properties in Central Florida that may work for us? Let me tell you something. And if not, okay. how do I get in contact with Let your broker? Let me tell you what to do. You go to benmal.com slash shop and so with Ben. You know why? Because if you tell me where you want those Jack in the Box. I grew up on Jack in the Box. I know all about Jack in the Box. I live in California. I love for Jack years. in the Box. I lived off a of Jack in the Box off the dollar menu. When I when he was first born up until the age of when you were three years old, I remember the only place I could eat was Jack in the Box every day on my budget on a dollar menu, <coughs> and I was making <coughs> 60, 70 grand a year. And but that's how expensive life was in California. Monster tacos. You tell me where you chips. want the Jack in the Boxes. I'll buy the land. I'll build a building. Or Ben Jr. will, and we'll build you a Jack in the Box anywhere you want. I'll get as you long as you sign that lease, baby, yeah. and make a commitment. I'll pop up six Jack in the Boxes before you can say the word Burger King. And I've lived in every major city in Florida. I'll tell you exactly what locations to go to. <clears throat> so get Send a hold of me. Us. Go to Kosova Bank. Come to the show. Maybe we'll drive around and look at some locations that I already know of. Yeah. All right. Ben loves building stuff with drive throughs Okay, he just built a Dave's Hot Chicken, baby, right there, right next to the Buck Stadium. We could put you in places like that. We could put you on the map. We could be the Jack coming out the box. What else you got? We could build the biggest Jack in the Box in the world and put it in Orlando because that's what they go for. Yeah, stuff but, like but, that. I mean, but seriously, go go to BenMall.com. Click the consult with Ben. <laughs> click with the consult with. Click with the consult with Ben and get us uh, on the phone. Shout out Joshua. Thank you for the $50 super chat. I appreciate that. No question, though. No question. Joshua shot. Listen, thanks for the 50 bucks because it's going to pay for some sausage for the Polak. But you need to come to the show and really put your money to use. Buy a ticket. BenMal.com slash live. Be there with all of us and have a great time in our hotel. How many owners of hotels do you, anybody know that you come stay in the owner's hotel and hang out with the goddamn owner in a hotel I wouldn't sell a mar for less than 40 million? How many people you know to hang out with like that? And even Vincent will be there. What else do you want? I know. Thanks for the, the, the money for Rafal and the channel and everything. We appreciate it. Plus, we're hurting right now. Look how much weight I'm losing. You look good. Is that my shirt? Everything bad turns good. No, That's my shirt. You wish. You, I bought a shirt in Montreal. <laughs> what else, Aaron? Got me. All right. Got shout out. Me. Shout out, chat. GPT. Uh, yeah, Thank you <laughs> for the super <laughs> chat. Ben, yeah. if I had 30 grand, how do I make it to 100 grand? You got to find the right deal. All right. Finding a deal is all it's about. Finding a deal, right? Yep. Absolutely. Everything else, it's finding a deal that, when it has some value add. All right, 30 grand could actually, if you have good credit, 
30 grand is a 20% down payment on a hundred and something thousand. So there right? you go. You, yeah. There you go. There's, there's a hundred grand at least right there. Don't do it on your own too. It sounds like that'll be a residential deal. So talk to a agent, a realtor, just don't go in blind. And if you don't. find something, oh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Are you done? That's it. But if you find something, try to get something, maybe like a duplex with one <laughs> tenant in there, because then you can put that as a part that, that counts as a part of your loan, right? As part of your income. To help you qualify better for a for the loan for a bigger loan, if you buy a duplex that already has someone living oh, yeah. in there, additional FHA income. FHA is one to four units. Yeah. You could buy a fourplex with FHA. Live in one, rent out the other. If you're paying rent, you could end up living rent free. And saving money is making money. Those, That's what you start doing. Those three units will count towards your income to help you qualify for that loan. It's Excellent. already added in there. So correct. What else, Aaron? All right, shout out Philip Lewis. Thank you for the super chat. I have been putting in CPI adjustments in all of my shopping center leases for the past nine years. When I talk to other landlords, they don't seem to do this other than the standard 2% yearly bumps. CPI is over 5%. Do you have CPI clauses in your leases? That's a great thing to put in there, especially since inflation jumped significantly last year. And you're right. A lot of landlords don't do it. They haven't done it historically. Inflation hasn't moved as much historically. So that CPI and tenants push back a lot. They're pushing back a lot more now these days, but landlords are a lot more strict and pushing for CPI increases. So, and before before we get too deep into it, what what is CPI? Consumer price index. So it's going to be based on what the CPI is at the time the lease term comes up. Okay. So instead of having a flat three percent, five percent, two percent increase in the option, CPI change every year. I don't know how the frequency of its change it, it changes. It's either monthly or yearly. It's monthly. Yeah, it's okay, monthly. So especially the past 12, 18 months, having a CPI increase is significantly better than two, three. <coughs> CPI protects you against inflation. Yeah, pretty much. Absolutely. It, exactly. keeps, it stays in tune with inflation. So if the guy puts in there, you know, oh, we're only going to bump your rent up every 2% every year. He's screwing himself because if inflation goes up, he's only getting 2%. When the cost of living is 5%. So CPI is a good, safe way. Now, it used to be where we would charge more than CPI because CPI was so low. Yeah. Then we were charging, when CPI was only 3%, we were charging a 5% increase in our leases. It's a market, it's the times, but CPA, CP, I. CPI is a pl way to play it safe, you know, to have in there. Sometimes it'll hurt you, sometimes it'll help you. It depends on the market. All right, shout out OG. Thank you for Super Chat. Uh, we are a small remodeling company. How can we get these contracts for builders, new home developments, and apartment buildings, et cetera, et cetera? You're a remodeling company. <clears throat> so how can you let me make like the connections? How can we get these contractors to build new homes? You got How can we get these contracts? He wants to be go from a remodeler yeah. to a builder. Well, you know, you're gonna have to probably maybe you know spec. Maybe if you got the money, spec a house. Find the right land in the right location and do it yourself. Get your name out there, sell a house, make some money. But if you're looking to become a home builder from remodeling, you got to advertise yourself as a home builder. But typically people want to see a track record. So you just got to find somebody that's willing to trust you to build a house for them. You're going to have to go out there and, and try to, you know, compete with other builders and see if you can beat their prices. I mean, you know, advertise as a builder. Tell all the people that you've been remodeling for that you are now building. And you can give them the same good service you gave for remodeling as building. And then they'll tell somebody, and they'll tell somebody, and there you go. At least you got a reputation with those people. All right, shout out. It's Bondo. Thank you for the super chat. Selling my condo and will pocket two hundred and fifty grand. Moving to the Bay Area and want to buy another primary residence. When do you think will be a prime time to move on a deal? And what are your thoughts on an ARM in this climate? Which Bay Area? California Bay Area or Florida Tampa Bay Area? I don't know. But if you got a quarter million bucks that you're going to put in your pocket and you want to buy another primary residence, if you're moving in this area, you need a good agent that's willing to go in there and lowball and find you a deal. Okay, let me tell you something. Uh, Vincent's better half, she got her license like I asked her to do. And let me tell you, she had to go out and find another family member a house, which we closed on today. All right. She went out there and she busted her butt. She showed us everything there was. She drove. She looked. She really earned her commission. And uh, she did a great job. She wasn't afraid to lowball stuff. She wasn't afraid to go back and forth. You need a good agent to find a good deal. 
Okay, that's a fact. Okay, now as far as an arm goes, these are dangerous times. I mean, you know, if you fix your rate and the rates go down, you're going to feel like, oh, man, I shouldn't have fixed my rate because now the rates are lower. All right. The arm is going to be based on whatever the government's charging on a, on a Fed rate. But if you got 250000 and you're selling your condo, if you lived in that condo as your primary residence, that 250000 is tax free as a single person. If you're married, you claim half a million. Okay, take the 250 right now. I'm not telling people to run out and borrow if they don't have to. If you can, try to just use the 250 you got and, and replace it and not have a loan. You can always run to a bank, get a HELOC. You can always go back and refinance and get a loan against it. But if, you, if you're only going to spend 250 on another condo or place, try to borrow as little money as possible right now because we don't know where the hell these rates are going. So, you know, that's what I suggest. But get a good realtor that's willing to take the time and show you everything that fits in your budget. Or if you want, I don't know if you'll find one, you can try, depending on the location, you might find a duplex. All right. And that other tenant could be paying your mortgage for you or most of it. Or in law suite. You know, if it's a really nice house, it'll come with an in law suite. A lot of people don't want to live around a tenant, but if you're thinking about saving money and making money, shit, you better do whatever you got to do. But I'm telling you now, prices are coming down. Don't pay the asking price, especially if it's a condo. Okay. Prices are coming down right now. I will tell you one thing. I don't, you know, if at that 250, you might get a hold of a wholesaler. Okay, that can sell you a good deal if you got cash because the wholesale deals are cheaper. I had guys sending me stuff all the time, wholesale deals. If I was looking for a condo or a house right now and had cash money, I'd buy it through a wholesaler because you will save probably about 10 to 20 or 20 percent. <clears throat> what else? All right, shout out Caleb. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, Ben, if you were Canadian, would you move to Florida for better real estate opportunities? Oh, wait a second, Bay Area, contact me at benmallow.com. Just send me an email. And you don't have to pay to talk to me, and I'll refer you to, Vincent. to Vincent's oh, better half, oh. and she'll find you a place in the Bay Area. <laughs> or I'll okay? find you a foreclosure. All right. There you I'll go. I'll be your wholesaler. With what else we got? Money. Would you move to Florida for better real ben, estate if opportunity you were if you were Canadian, somewhere else? Would right you now. Move to Florida for better real estate opportunity where you it's not. I've been to Canada. Canada's a very hard place to make money unless you go out in the boondocks. Okay, listen, everywhere is a deal. But I seen guys in Canada. We went and sat down while the guy was doing a deal in Canada. There's deals everywhere. Okay, and the taxes aren't as bad as I thought. Once you start thinking about if you live in a state tax here, a uh, state with tax, it's not much different than California. Like if you live in California, it's oh, like yeah. living in Canada. If you live in New York, it's like Canada tax. There's no difference by the time you pay the damn capital gains with the state tax. But listen, Florida, you live here. There's a lot of Canadians here because it is cheaper. The weather's great. Come to Florida, check around, see what you like, see if there's a deal. Go online. If you got the money, you want to buy some commercial, get a hold of Ari. Ripco, baby. Ripco, and he'll get ripping. Him and Nathan will start ripping and running, baby. Ripping and running. All right. Uh, shout out Ham. Thank you for your super chat. Is it better to renovate a one unit than cash out refi or buy a turnkey triplex or quadruplex? It depends on the numbers. Everything in real estate is numbers. Add it up. Sit down and say, okay, in this scenario, if I renovate a unit, can I charge more rent? Can I borrow more money against the place because it's going to be worth more because I'm charging more rent? Can I do a refi? How much is the rate? These are all numbers that you have to sit down and figure out. All right? If you buy a turnkey triplex or fourplex, if you're buying a turnkey, you might be paying retail. All right? So if it's turnkey, there's no value add. If the, the rent's already maxed out and the place is already fixed up, you're just going to buy it for a cap rate. So it's all in the deal. It's all in the cash flow. All right, shout out Nicholas. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your last, last name, but bucks. thank you for the $100 super chat. Um, hello, gentlemen. I'm 28. I'm a commercial real estate broker, professional fireman in New Jersey, and uh, and I'm also an Air Force vet. You're a lot of things. I just used my VA loan to house hack my first four family off market this year. How do I grow an empire like you have built today, Ben? Listen. Shana if, Tova. Meto. All right, God, Shana Tova. Dang it. Uh, He's only half Jewish. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. 
All right. The Jews have a new year earlier than everybody else because they want to be one step ahead of everybody. All right. So everybody else celebrates New Year in January. The Jews got to be ahead of everybody else. And we do it in September or October. All right. That's that's the story. <laughs> All right. Listen, seriously, you know, listen, if you just went out on a VA loan with no money down and bought yourself a fair for, for family fourplex off market, you're brilliant. You're great. Congratulations. OK, but there's any value added in that deal. That's the fact, because I know you got a loan on for most of the, what you paid for it. Is there any fat in that deal? Can you improve it? Can you fix it up, raise the rents? Can you refinance it after you do that? And then you take the refi money, and then you go out and buy something else. Or you could flip it and 1031 it. It's all about adding value. That's how you grow. The 1031 is the reason why I grew, because I didn't pocket the money. I didn't go out and buy all this stuff like I could have. I just rolled it into the next deal, and that forced me to grow by wanting to defer my tax. So basically, instead of paying that 20 or in California, 30% capital gains, I rolled it into the next deal and then paid the tax. That's how you grow. But go out there. Now, you use your VA loan. You can't use it again until you pay that one off. But maybe you can do FHA. I don't know. But listen. Find another deal, but take care. Make money on the deal you bought. Hopefully, the deal you bought is going to give you some upside so you can grow. What else? Right? You're supposed to put that deal in another another loan and then use his VA loan again, right? He could refinance and reuse his VA loan. Yes, I believe so. But check with the VA. Keep just rinse, wash, I think he's going to keep loaning you money as long as you don't owe them money, like FHA. What else? All right. Actually, Ari, I have a question for you. So, like, what is the biggest deal you've done, like, so far in your career? And then, one like, deal, biggest deal you've done with one him? One single deal? So, most of the deals that, that I do are under $20 million. Uh, I typically don't deal in, like, the $30, $40, 50000000 million plus. So, I'd say the largest deal I've directly done was $22 million. Wow. And yeah. then the largest one I've done with him is, like, $11 million. But you're listing a property. At $37 million. <clears throat> Right now, he's listing a property for me for $37 million. And you know me. I don't trust a lot of people. If I trust somebody, then you can trust them. Okay. $37 million on one asset you got. Yeah, absolutely. Which asset is that? I forgot. TBC, Tampa Bay. <clears throat> right near the stadium. Look at that. $37 million. Will we take thirty five? I don't know. Write him an offer. If you got $35 million laying around, call Ari up at Ripco in Tampa and say, Hey, Ari, you think Fat Ben will take $35 million? Believe me, he'll write it up and put it in front of me. You never know, baby. You never know. Nice. All right. Uh, shout out OG. Um, <clears throat> I'm from Dallas, Texas. I know okay. Nathan will do it. <laughs> do our best. Nathan gets a $35 million offer coming in. Shit, he'll be writing that goddamn docus sign offer up to me and sending it to me quicker than you can blink an eye. Well, Better you're the one yes sending me those damn docus signs, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Like you said, I'm always right. <laughs> and then, man, man they, they send it right away. They don't fool around. <laughs> this guy's don't fool around, neither one of them. If they get an offer, they're on it, baby. They push it to me. They stay on me. They actually help me because they push me. Okay? That's what I like about them. They don't sit around and say, oh, well, I don't want to bother Ben, or I told him about it. He keeps pushing. Ben, what do you want to do? We got to make an offer. We got to get back to these guys. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? They're the driving force behind me driving. They're like the engine in the car, baby. That's a fact. All right. What right. else? Um, you mentioned buying a duplex, but how do I go about buying a multi-unit apartment or a condo building instead? Listen, <clears throat> a condo building, condos are individual units within a building. All right. So they each have their own tax bill or each a different a separate unit. Okay. Multi-units where you own the whole goddamn place. All right. Listen, typically you find a good deal on a multi-unit apartment building. You got to have 20% down or more. And these days you might have to push 25 because the banks are getting really scared. Okay. A condo building, you can buy condos within a building, and then you own them and you can rent them out as long as the condo association allows it. All right? You can do whatever you want. But I'm telling you now, find a deal. Find something where the numbers tell you right off the bat, yes, I can make money on this. If I raise the rents, I fix it up. You know, it's all about finding deals that you can add value to. 
I don't care what kind of real estate is, whether it's shopping centers, whether it's storage facilities. We had me looking at a storage facility in a shopping center where we could maybe take over and run the storage facility and fix up the shopping center in Apollo and maybe make all kinds of money on the place. Who knows? It's about finding the fat on the bone, baby. Fat on the bone. Just like there. What else? All right. Uh, shout out, John. Thank you for your Zoom chat. Lost my dad, who did a lot of commercial real estate. Vincent and Aaron hug that guy every day. You don't know how much you unintentionally take for granted. Oh, that's not a hug. It's a fucking hit. Until that clock runs out. Cherish that man. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for that uh, comment. We appreciate it. But um, uh, they hug me once in a while. You I'm know. touching his leg right now. He keeps touching my leg. What else, Aaron? We <laughs> All right. Shout night. out, Troy. I'm 18 years old and night. a full-time yeah, college student. Time. I am currently in real estate course pursuing my license. Does it make sense to do real estate part-time? Yeah, so absolutely. I think one of the most important things that Ari alluded to in the beginning is having somebody that you can get great mentorship from. So at that age, when you're still going through college and you can still make some money on the side to help support yourself through college, but also being able to lever that experience into something once you get into the real world and really are making money and, and give yourself an opportunity that you'll be head over heels above other people in the same situation, same age as you, because you've taken the time to get that license and then also use that to get that experience that a lot of people, especially nowadays, kids our age don't really want, or kids your age and people, I'm 25, so just a little older than you, they're, they're not working as hard as they used to. And even some of my classmates, I noticed that with. So it's being able to one, have that ambition and then use that to lever that into real experience and be able to take a position when you get out, that is a lot higher up than you could have if you just did that when you graduated. So you're, you're already ahead of the game. What were you doing at 18 when you finally graduated high school? Did you graduate by 18 finally? And then you went to college. What were you doing? I went to college you for one year. One year partying versus 13 years of slaving so listen, for you. Can you imagine going to school? I can't even remember what I did in college because of you. You, you literally yeah, yeah. wiped my memory from college. And all I can think about is all these properties. You out from drinking all and these partying. properties I had to go to. How can you and remember anything? I can only think about the smells of the apartments I've been in, and the roaches, and the fiends, and right, the. That's enough. Okay, but yeah. The point <laughs> is, can you imagine going to college at eighteen, and then all right, you got to work, you got to study, but imagine if he gets his license. And on the weekends, while everybody else is partying, he's doing open houses for some agent and showing properties. Because at 18, you get a license and you can make money. It's a license to make money. And imagine when you graduate. You graduate college and you already got a real estate license. You can spend the four years you're in college doing all kinds of stuff with that real estate license. Not only that, you could do property management. You could, How many student properties do we own where we hired the students in college? To help us lease the apartments to other students. You can do anything you want. Get your license. Go get a job in a, an apartment building that's written to students. You, let me tell you something. You know what one kid called me up and told me to do what he did? He, he rented a four-bedroom house while he was in college. He lived in one of the bedrooms. He rented the other three out by the bed. And he didn't cash flow, but he could live for free. Genius. And then the money his parents gave him every month for rent, but right in his pocket, baby. I mean, you know, listen, you can do whatever you want. You put your mind to it and you got a plan. Get that license, get good grades, and start trying to get in an office around your college and start trying to make some money and learn. It's great. All right. Uh, shout out, Math Matthias. Thank you the for the super that? chat. Would you let Vincent manage a hot dog stand? You guys are going to start <laughs> turning me up. All right. I've managed more stuff than you could dream about. Okay. Yes. He put me in the position, but he also left me in the position and Never said, don't him. fuck it up. So I've done stuff for 13 years that you could only dream of and that I've missed dreaming about because I had fun and I learned a lot. So He's I could manage all. a million hot dog stands. You the one really? who can't manage fucking hot dog stand. Right, yeah, okay. oh, yeah. He's starting. Yeah, he's starting. He's a keyboard warrior. Really. Well, he really got keyboard keyboard. Hey, you can't even manage right, feeding yeah. your damn dog go at your mom's dog. house. I'm gonna find a hot dog stand and put it in front of his I'm house. I'm gonna start roasting. I'm gonna start commenting back. You let me comment. Come on, give me a. What else you got here? Give me a comment back. All right, shout out Matthias. Thank you. Two dollar bastard. Thank you for the super chat. I'm 20. My credit is a 720, and I am a full-time college student getting a degree in computer science. 
and I work 40 hours a week as a construction worker. I will be at your event and hand you my resume. All right, baby. I'm waiting for it because let me tell you something. Uh, if you know, let's talk. All right. I don't know where you live. I don't know what you're doing, but listen, if you're 20 years old, you got good credit, you're in college full time and you still have how you're working 40 hours a week construction. But let me tell you something, come to the event, bring us your resume. If you live and go to school around here, we might be able to give you maybe construction work too. We're building 10 rooms right now. I don't know, but you're definitely somebody with a head on. Right. And I look forward to seeing you. Did you put his name there? Uh, yeah. Come up and Somewhere. tell me I'm Remind the guy about. I work go to school full time and I'm work construction and I'll remember you. I'll see you at the event. I'll even get you a burrito. All right, shout out the vibe. I'm a Mexican buffet, what? by the way, and what? Italian and all that stuff. What's the best way to work remote in real estate? I want to get my MLO to do such. Any suggestions? By the way, love y'all. What's an MOO? And what's MOFO? But love that, y'all. Uh, MOFO smoke one for. I know what mofo means. What does uh, MLO mean? I don't know. That's too uh, for One me. four million. I think this guy's smoking something right now. But uh, what, what's an MLO? You don't I, know. I have no idea. I know MOL means more or less. But uh, listen, you need to what's call us back when you're not smoking. Remote in real estate. What do you think? So Ari? look, in in what we do in shopping centers, it's tough to work remote because you got to know the sub market, the streets, the different corners, the drive traffic drivers. The economic drivers in that micro area of a sub market within Tampa. Now, the best way to work remote, actually, to answer your question, is single tenant net lease. The most important thing about single tenant net lease is the strength of the tenant and the length of the term. So you could sell a Walgreens in Alaska from your pajamas here in Florida. All so right. you want to work remote real estate? I bought a Home Depot from a guy in New York. All right, he did fly down to meet me, but he didn't have to. Yeah, exactly. Because he knew what I'm looking for. He knew that it was right. It fit what I was looking for. It was a great brand. It was a good price. And he knew that uh, the lease terms and all that stuff, he sends me by email. Today's world, a lot of things can be done remotely, but he's right. Triple net, single tenant net, uh, leasing uh, properties are easier. But yes, you can do stuff remotely. It's all about making a marriage, finding a property that fits the buyer or finding a buyer that fits the seller. That's what it's all about. You can do it remotely, but you're gonna, it's going to be a little difficult if it's more than a single tenant, like yeah, you said. Yeah, other than single tenant. It's going to be a little harder. harder. Although I do know a lot of good brokers that do work nationwide job uh, product types, like mobile home parts. A lot of guys you work with that, 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 that make uh, offers on your listings, a lot of them are from far away. You yeah, know? but they travel to visit the site. But yeah, yeah, yeah if you want to work really remote real estate in commercial Especially investment real estate, boots on the ground. single tenant net lease. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> all right, you guys. I don't want to keep you guys all, all night. You've been right, here, cool. you know. But whenever you're ready to go, we can go. You know. All right, I'll, we'll let you it's know. Up to you. All right. Uh, shout out Drop Top. Thanks. I have a hundred ninety grand home, three percent rate. Should I sell for four hundred grand? You know, so I, it, that depends on your life right now. If you're sitting there at a three percent fixed rate on that house. And you could sell for four hundred grand. You got two hundred grand equity in here. If you lived over there, if you lived in that house over two years, yes, you will walk away with two hundred thousand or close to tax free dollars. But what are you going to do when you sell that house? Are you going to turn around and have to buy something and pay more than double that rate now? And how's that going to affect you? But you know, everybody's got their own life. You know, yes, you're going to give up that really great loan, but you're going to get your hands in 200 grand. How much you got in the bank right now? But where are you going to live when you sell that house? All right, you got to consider all these things. It's a personal thing when you're dealing with your home. How many kids you got? What neighborhood you got to live in? You know, all that good stuff. It's a personal thing. I mean, if you want to go to BenMal.com and we talk personal, we can talk personal. Just go to BenMal.com slash shop. And so with Ben and we'll have a 15 minute call and, and we'll discuss it. But you got options right now. If you never had $200,000 in your hand tax free, you know, this could be your time. You don't want to miss. Question is, what's the next step? What else? Beautifully right. put. Can you defer capital gains in a 1031 if you cash it out? If so, what's the best way to do so? Thanks, guys. You rock. No, the minute you touch any net proceeds after a sale, you cannot exchange them. So it's called boot, baby, boot. There's a 1031 intermediary. So at a closing, all those net proceeds, they don't go to you. They go to the 1031 intermediary. And then you have to re-exchange those funds, reinvest those funds into another property. The minute you touch it, it's taxed. Unless he's talking about when he says cash out. I mean, Refi you can't touch the cash. 
You can't touch a penny from the closing when you sell something at 1031. Not a penny. And if you do touch any of it, you could touch part of it and you're going to pay tax on that. Okay. And then the part that you didn't touch, you can defer. I have sold properties with no cash out where I just had to find another deal because I refinanced it. Oh, yeah. Cash out. And I pulled refined. my money out already. Yes. And I had a 1031 with no cash to go to a new deal. I had to come out of my pocket to buy the other deal. If I sold something for 250000 I got to replace 250000 Why? Because I cashed out and took the money before I sold. That's the, Everybody has a different situation. But you cannot touch the money. And if you do, you're going to pay tax on it. Simple as that. But, yeah. But, so you're talking about a cash out refi. It's not going it to be. Depends. Yeah. You know, I, it's hard to tell when people just send you one little yeah, question, yeah. you know, yeah, what the no situation doubt. is. But what he said is 100% true. You touch the money, you're paying Uncle Sam, baby. What else? All right. Uh, shout out, Jeff. What, I mean, with interest rates up, what are you 1031 people into? Are you paying taxes and cashing out? Maybe, maybe. What minimum cap rate makes sense? What asset type? Listen, everybody's got a different situation. All right. I may have to pay tax on certain assets, but I may I may be, decide to pay tax. It depends on my basis. How much is my gain? Your gain determines your tax. That's what you have to figure out. And so, you know, everybody's got a different situation. I'm old now. I might say, you know what? Screw it. I'll just pay the tax. You know, I mean, you know, the only other option is I don't sell a property. I wait till I, I pass away. And then my wife inherits stepped up basis. And, you know, but she's already got enough. She don't need any more. Anyway, um, the point is, is that everybody's got a different situation. You do what's right for your life. And if you're not sure about what to do for your life, come to our show and I'll tell you. Or go to benmal.com slash consult and I'll tell you. Everybody's got a different situation. I can't just, I, I got to know what the hell's going on in your life. All right. Uh, shout out, Noah. Thank you for your super chat. 150 grand to spend at 20 in school. About to toss it in a CD at 5% for six months. With the amount, would it be better to buy a single property, mul multiple different ones, or build something like a fourplex? He's got 150 grand to spend at 20, and he's in school. Yes. All oh, right. Listen, you're in school. You're 20 years old. Stash your CD. cash. Put it in the CD Go for six CD. months. And let me tell you something. You can get six percent right now. You got to shop around. You got to find who's paying out the most. I believe right now Bank of America is paying six percent on a six-month CD, and it might it might be a bank that's even willing to pay you more. You know, you got to shop around. See who's going to give you the highest rate. I know you can get five percent on a market money market account right now. That's not tied up like a CD if you want. All right, with the amount uh, I lost oh, the rest uh, of it. Right the amount better to pay a single property. We better to buy a single property, multi different ones. Build something like a four bucks. Listen, with one hundred fifty grand. I mean, you can do some stuff in real estate, but you got to make sure that it works. The numbers got to work. But if you're 20 years old and you're in school, I'd wait. Knock out your career. Get that. I tell everybody in school, get that base in life. Graduate from school, have a career, and then worry about real estate. Because whatever career you choose, it's going to protect you for the rest of your life. And then you can do real estate too. And if you're really good at real estate, maybe you'll give up that profession or maybe you won't. You can do both, you know, but at 20 years old, if you're sitting around 150 grand in a bank, you're safe. And it's always nice to be safe. Right now, it's not a good time to get into real estate. You're not going to find a deal that easy. So stash your cash, but get the best rate you can. Even looking at my notes, that's what I said. That was nicely put. All right. Shout out Ashton. I, uh, you, you are my son. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say about a product nice. that produces 38% yield in itself, independent of third parties, uh, trustlessly, and has worked flawlessly for three years? I want to be your crypto teacher. Basically, right. what I, do you think I, about crypto? I already screwed up in the stock market. I can't go with crypto. That's, that's out of my area. It's out of my generation. Anybody here at crypto? You look no, like a crypto. crypto. You're a crypto. <laughs> All right, you're a crypto. No. Is it a crypt somewhere where you put people that are dead? Yes, that is one of them. That's I, bad, I'm not ready man. for the crypt yet. I mean, soon, but not yet. I mean, you know, I appreciate it, but I'm not into crypto. Um, talked a little bit. He tried mining or something like that, and that didn't work out. He ran up my electric bill to the roof. Uh, <laughs> and I told him, get your fucking computers out of my goddamn office. <laughs> the electric bill was $200 a month, and it went to 1000 How much money did you make? Well, I didn't make any yet. Well, how are we going to pay the $800 difference in the electric bill? 
But anyway, crypto works for some people. I'm not against it. I just don't have any knowledge about it, so I can't talk about it. And I'm not in a financial position to risk any money right now. Right now, we're stashing on cash. What else? All right, here we go. This is more of a banking question. So do one of you guys want to read it? Because, you know. BM uh, 504 SBA. Is that the same loan that the, that person tried to get when you were selling my uh, sweet tomatoes? Yes. And you strung her, and she strung us along for like six months? 12, but yes, exactly. <laughs> SBA, Small Business Association loan. That's not as much in our world on pure investment real estate. That is if you're going to occupy a building or occupy 50% or more of a building and you're going to operate your business out of it, you can apply for a 504 loan. I don't know all the details of that. It's a little outside my wheelhouse. 15 year term, four years interest rate, four years interest only. Does that mean four years in? Four years into interest it. Interest rate went from five and a half to 10 and a half. Wasn't fixed. Yeah. Well, you screwed wow. up like I did. And 10 and a half sounds like a lot. Ask bank to do it. He asked the bank only, to do interest only. Yeah. PMT. I don't they're looking into, into it. it. I have it up for sale. All right. Well, I don't know how much the business is worth or the building, but, you know, if, if you can sell it and if you think your cash flow is getting hit that hard like me and we're selling, we're selling. But you always try to negotiate with the banks. All right. Because it pays for them to work with you. When COVID hit and all this other stuff goes on. They deferred my payments on my hotels. They knew I was closed up. I had no yeah. money coming in. They understand your interest rate. I don't know why an SBA loan would go up so high, but I guess it's possible. But it's crazy that you went up five points. Maybe the bank can refinance it because you've been into it for four years, it looks like. So you've already seasoned the loan. Maybe you could pay the 504 loan off and refinance into like a 7 or 8% loan. That may help you. Uh, you need to work with the bank. Always try to work with the bank. Believe it or not, the bank's actually your friend, okay? They're always your friend until you don't be a friend to them. If you try to work with them, they'll try to work with you and make a deal. Maybe you can refinance. I don't know, but you need to do something. If you got to sell, and then sell if you got to do. But just don't screw up your credit and don't try to default on a loan because that's not good. All right, shout out, Mike. Thoughts on the condo market with all the new inspections slash special assessments. They're kicking the older people out and then building a it's new very, luxury. very, very, very difficult right now in Florida, especially if you're on waterfront property, because all these older condo buildings where the people died from the building coming down, uh, they have structural issues. They're having special inspections now. What they're doing is the, the, the condo associations are having to come up with all this money and have these big assessments, and people can't afford them. And a lot of these buildings have exhausted their life uh, expectancy. I know that's why you gotta be very careful when you buy an older building because older buildings, everything that gets old gets broken down. I'm proof of it. Okay. When things get old, they get old. There's nothing you can do about it. If you need a water, it's very, very bad in South Florida right now. There are a lot of condo buildings. I was just down there. People are telling me I can't afford the assessment. They want to spend a million dollars fixing up a condo. And there's a, there's a 50 of us tenants. Each one's got to come up with 20 grand. I know the 20 grand. What do I do? And if you don't pay it and the condo pays it, they could kick you out for not paying it. Especially what happened to the condo in Miami that collapsed ever since then, they're starting to, more and more special assessments. So it's very dangerous to be in that situation right now. It may be if you're in an older condo building, you might consider selling. Okay. If you don't think you're going to be able to handle the assessments. So it's something that's serious. The buildings over like a lot four of or five stories, right? So all anything, the anything three stories and lower. doesn't matter right. these days. If it's old, mm -hmm. it's old. If the concrete, the foundation's getting deteriorated, the steel's getting rusted out, and that thing could have collapse, then it's serious. It's And a lot of those buildings can't be saved even. No. I mean, they got to you know, be raised and rebuilt. I looked at a hotel they want to sell me on South Beach, on the beach. Had to be knocked down. There was no way to save it. There was just no way. The, the engineers told me, forget about it. You'll never be able to save this building. So if you're buying it, be prepared to knock it down. I didn't buy it. All, All right, right, Jance. After, uh, he's got to go. Questions. There you go. Yeah. Questions. We're, we're, we're going to read a couple more Super Chats, and then we're going to wrap it up anyways, yeah, no, guys. No, no, but um, shout out, Jay. Have a management consulting background looking to break into investment sales. I got my real estate license. Any advice on where to start looking for jobs? Yeah, sure. I can speak on this one. So I graduated from Florida State two and a half years ago knowing that I wanted to get in the commercial real estate industry, retail specifically. Uh, but it's, it's, it's definitely a tough industry to break into. I think from junior year to senior year, I put in over 500 applications on LinkedIn, every kind of application website that I could think of. I was applying to Orlando, Tampa, Jacksonville, Atlanta, 
all the cities I knew I wanted to be in and probably got 10 to 15 responses out of those 500 applications. So it was about being persistent, knowing that's what I wanted to get into uh, and was able to continue down that path, interviewed with Ari and I've been going ever since with them. So, and that's a lot of what investment sales is. So you got to keep grinding to get it. And then investment sales in itself is a very similar grind. There's going to be a lot of no, no answers, no's in general, but you're going to get those people and it's just all about uncovering them and being persistent. And uh, on top of that, I would say firms like Marcus and Millichap, Matthews, Horvath and Tremblay, any firm that has a structured training program or talking to any experienced real estate agent in investment sales that has experience training, developing, and mentoring. So what you want to do is you want to either go to a firm like those ones I named that have structured training, because that'll cut what makes mo takes most people 10 years. It'll cut it in half for you or somebody that has the ability to train and mentor. That's the best way to accelerate your career. And that's what I would do. You know how I got where I'm at today? He says he has a management consulting background. I don't know what type of management he's talking about, but you know what got me into real estate? Property management. And if you got a license, you're licensed to manage it. And property management companies can make a fortune. You know why? Maybe you start your own management company. Because if a guy's making a hundred grand a rent, a hundred grand a month in rent in an apartment building, you're gonna get five to six thousand dollars a month to just oversee the management and pay the bills. There's a lot of money in property management, let me tell you. And it, when I was young, I went to work for a guy who he was a developer. He built real estate and he managed it himself. If you get with one of those guys, then you're also invest it, it, get involved with the investment, the new projects that go off the ground, opportunities. But management is a big part of real estate that people forget. There's a lot of money in management, okay? When I bought John's Pass, you guys were managing or somebody else was? Somebody Colliers. Uh, Colliers. Colliers. And you know they would charge. That place brings in uh, millions of dollars a year. They were getting a nice fee no matter what. The place is doing good. The place is doing bad. It's not the management company's fault. They're doing the best they can. They're still getting their fee off the gross. So don't discount looking into property management also. But like he said, if you go to a firm that has some kind of future and program for you. All right. We're wrapping it up. Do one more and then we're one, more, one more, baby. Oh, He's hooked man. now. He's hooked. We'll see you back here <laughs> Thursday. Ari's coming back. He's going to show up and say, hey, let's do it. Every week. You know, I mean, we look for property managers, even though we're a property management company. I've been on Craigslist and I've looked, you know, I've looked at every uh, listing you could imagine. There is a lot of people put in your city, put in your area. There's a lot of people looking for managers to just join their group or their company or their, you know, I never someone paid like rent him. My whole life. You know why? Because I managed the building I lived in. Yeah. I never mean, that's paid rent. It saved my tons life. of people looking go. for that right now. You need to go on Craigslist. You need to look, Every you need day. to apply. But he, he wants to get into to investment real estate. And Ari's the only one to call him back. You really <laughs> want to be in investment real estate. You got to join fighting. the right team, right? Yep. Right team. You got to right join a team that's making money, baby. Even I see people post husband and wife. Like people say, I'm looking for a husband and wife team to move into my trailer park or my that hundred is, units a good part and manage estate. it. You know, the husband will do the maintenance or vice versa. If you can manage somebody else's property, you can end up owning your own. Yeah. That's what happened to me. I managed for other people and I ended up managing my, if I can manage for him, I can manage for myself. Nice. Well, you need some money and a credit and find a deal. Yeah. What else? All right, Preston, thank you for your super chat. Baby. Thanks, Ben, for being you. Your spirit and the way you look at life, money and family is a blessing. One of my super people. grateful. One of people. You are my chicken. spirit animal baby. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I wish you the best. All right. Are we done? You got any more <laughs> big ones or what? Animal. We I keep mean, going. I think, I think that's good. Every, I mean, you pretty much answered every single person's question Great. on here. On here. Well, like, we thank everybody for much, dropping in. I hope you enjoyed our special guest tonight. No, Mitch good. made an appearance. He's living in the neighborhood now. I'm back in town, shot. baby. He's got a house in the neighborhood. He's got back a Rolls Royce. Back in town, Royce. baby. You know, he's living large, baby. Three weeks in, you working the hell out of me, boy. You and little Ben are some working hard the working on pass, giving out tickets to people. That Holy didn't pay. shit! Uh, yeah, we're working in the We had our parking wars. And now pass. he didn't got rid of the management at the parking garage. Working there the I'm there working there too. Thank the God, I got some help though. They are helping, but there's a lot of work I you got going on. Vincent is the man. Vincent is the man. These decent, smart people right here. All right. Well, thanks very much. Hey, seriously, guys, check out our live event. Great night. 
Check out a live event but October you 7th. Come to the show. We ain't got many tickets left, so you better hurry up. We got a shuttle bus that goes right to the airport to pick you up. Just pick up the phone and say, hey, I'm here. Come pick me up. Seriously. Holiday Inn, Four Point Sheridan, Tampa Airport. We got rooms waiting for you. We got seats waiting for you. We got food waiting for you. And Vincent's going to be waiting for you. So there. what else do you want? Who else better are you going to hang out with on a Saturday night, October the 7th? In Tampa, Florida, baby. See you there. October Adios, 7th. Amigos. Yeah. October 7th. Be there. The right. networking. One, one time, and- everybody go. On the count of three, everybody go. Adios, amigos. You ready? One, two, three. Adios, Adios amigos. amigos.